So yesterday, a guy sent me an email asking about one of the videos that I did where I teach how to build a calendar. And he asked me to send him a video on how to create the same calendar, but with a weekly view and a daily view. And I told him, hey, instead of just sending you a video, I might use this as a comeback to YouTube after one year without posting, and I can teach everyone how to do it. This video is probably the one that has more comments, more questions. So I will try to go through this video and answer all those questions, or at least the most important, the most hard to build. So yesterday night, I built this calendar that you can see here. And because I didn't want to waste our time doing back and forward uh, and testing stuff. So I built it, it's working, and we can go um, and we can just go through it and see how it's done. So we see here that is um, this one is our monthly view. Okay, we are in the month of October. If you see here, it's already something different. A lot of people ask me about this um, because this is the previous month. And this is the next month, okay, November. If we go further, we can see here our October and our November, okay? If we go to our weekly view, we go through our to our current week, okay? If we go all the way, we can see our tasks, we can change months, and then if we go back to our um, monthly view, and we click in one of these ones here, we can see the day, okay? If we go back to our monthly view, choose one with more than one task, we can see here all of our tasks for the selected day, okay? Now, if we go here to our bubble editor, you see that we have a very basic structure, okay? We have our column here. This is a reusable element. I always recommend build everyone everything that you can um, with a reusable element because it's just easier to manage and it's easier to find the workflows, the stuff that we're working on. So here we have our column, okay? Simple stuff. If we expand here, we have our title. This title here contains a dynamic element because here in our group calendars, we have um, option set, okay? A custom state, which is an option set. It is just for navigation. I created this basically so we can go through month, week, and day. Okay, monthly view, weekly view, and daily view. And here we have just a toggle menu. Okay, very simple toggle menu. Where we have here our option set. Okay, this group here is month option set. And this one here is a weak option set, okay? We, of course, have the conditionals just for UI if this group is hovered or if our group option set is this group calendar view, okay? Sorry, this custom state for this calendar is this option set, okay? Now, if we close this and we open our monthly view, you will see that in our monthly view, we have here our um, custom states. One is for month, another one is for year. We are using this in our expression. So if we come here, this is the expression that we are using to calculate the days, right, that we have on the month offset month. We always start from the current month, okay? But then we can go, we can add a month or subtract a month. Same with years, okay? If we go all the way to one, when we click back one, which will be January, if we go back, then we go back to 2023, okay? I will have a Notion document and this one will work, not like the last one. And I will do a step-by-step -step with all the elements that we have here and the expressions for each group, for each calendar, okay? So don't worry. In here, our repeating group, we have a fixed number of rows and columns because 
Every month we have five weeks and every week we have seven days, okay? So this needs to be a fixed um, rows and columns. And our, uh, our data source is this guy here, okay? So this guy is called get days. This is just um, um, one of the elements of the toolbox plugin, okay? The expression one. So if we click here, if we, we can find here, you see this little guy here is the expression, okay? And you can find when you download the toolbox plugin. So here we have our reporting group. We have the um, type of content is date and the data source is days. And inside here, each, uh, each cell, we have a group where the content is date. So we have date, has a content and the data source is current cell date. This text here is of course the parent group date um, formatted has just to show our day. Okay. So if you see here, it's just the D. And here we have our repeating group where we search for the tasks. This is the data. We're implementing data inside the calendar. So if we see here, search for tasks, we do a search for where a start date, or you can use end date, or you can use whatever date you want. Okay. So it's greater or equal to our parent group date rounded down to day. Okay. So we are saying basically this start date must be today, but it must be greater than um, midnight. Okay. And here we have start date less than parent group date rounded down to day plus one day. Cause then we are saying, Hey, I want all. So, so this task must be, uh, has, um, a date less than tomorrow at midnight. Okay. Then we have all our tests for this, um, current cell date. Okay. When we have here, and we say when the parent group date extract month is not the current date plus months main calendar month offset, which is basically the same expression that we have here. Okay. And then we have here just to, uh, for UI purpose. Okay. So we are basically saying when this date month is not the month that we want to display here then we change the font color. And when this text is hovered, we also change the text color, the font color. Okay. Now, when we click here, what are we doing? It's basically changing the um, custom state of our navigation. So we will change the custom state of this guy here to week. Okay. And when we click on the month, we change it to month, okay? Here, if you see, we used to go back and forward on the months. And when we click here, we set the first, okay? If it is not empty, we subtract one. If it is empty, first, we need to set the, um, the number that we want. So the current um, day time, month. So this month is nine then we subtract one, okay? Just when main calendar month offset is empty. We do the same one, the same thing when we go forward, okay? First, we check if this is not empty, we just add one. If it is, if it is empty, then we select the, the current month um, number, and then we add one, okay? Here we just find the current, the uh, selected month, and then we display just the name of the month. And that's it for this one. The um, weekly is a little bit different because the expression is different. Because before we had to find the 30 plus days, but here we just need to find seven days. 
okay? It'll always be seven days. When we have months, it can be um, less than 30 or more than 30. We can have 29, 28, like in February, or we can have um, 31, okay? But here, weeks always will, every week will always have seven days, okay? Doesn't matter how many days we have on a year or on a month. So that's why it's different. This will also be on our uh, notion, okay? So um, don't worry. And the structure is basically the same. We have a fixed number of rows, which is just one, because we want to display just one week and the number of days that we have in a week. That will always be seven. Here we have basically the same thing. We have our group with current cell date, and inside we have our repeating group with our tasks. Same exactly um, um, search, okay? Has the monthly calendar. And here we have our display the date of this parent group, okay? Here we have the same thing, but here, because we are always showing first our current week, we don't need to uh, condition for when this is empty, because we are always showing first the current week here in our expression. If you check it here, we are always extracting the current date week, okay? And here, so here we just have to uh, add one or subtract one, okay? And when we click one of these in here or on our um, monthly view, what we do is first, we have also um, a custom state in our daily view, which is the parent group date. And then we just navigate between um, the month or week to day. Okay, so before we go to our day view, here in our weekly view, we have the option sets, the custom states, my bad. The custom states are just month offset and week offset. For now, we are using just the month, the, the week offset, because I didn't have time, honestly, to change, um, to add here to this code, um, to check the month that we are we are at, because then we can match the month for the current um, um, monthly view calendar, okay, with this one. So if we are in November and when we click on week, we can just transfer the month that we have on month to the week, and we go to the first week of November, okay. For right now, we're always starting from our current week. So from these custom states, we only need the week offset, okay? So here, the main calendar, we have month and year, year, month, and week, okay? And here in our daily view, we have just the group, okay? Just a column. And here we have our repeating group doing the exactly same search, okay? Because here, instead of finding a number, we are just getting the exactly date, okay? So here, we don't actually need this. I was, doing, I was probably just doing some tests. We don't need this. But here, we have, our, um, we have our group. And to go back and forward, we take the date, parent group date, and we subtract the one. And here, here we add one. So here is days, okay? One thing to notice, this guy here is parent group date plus date plus days. But instead of just adding one, we subtract one. So we add minus one, okay? Then all these groups here, they are uh, connected to the parent group. So when I click here in our weekly calendar, I click in here and I change the state of this day to the parent group date. I'm saying, hey, I want this group here to be in uh, 4th of November, let's say. 
So that's what we are doing. And then all the um, groups inside, they will be um, checking the um, 4th of November. Okay. Okay. This is already a very long video, but I hope this helped you guys to understand better how to create these calendars and how to improve the calendars, create different views, how to add data and how to use conditions to for the UI. And if you like this video, please give a like and consider subscribe to the channel because I will bring more and more videos now. And I will take this and turn it into a template and I will leave on the link below. So with a step-by-step -step on Notion or on my website, you will also have this calendar where you can download it, okay? And you can just copy and paste or you can go through and check all this stuff so you can learn better. So yeah, I hope you liked. I hope you, you will turn into a subscriber and I see you in the next video.